And good Monday morning, everybody. Welcome. This is Lore Forge, the podcast for Ashes of Creation and episode 52. Gentlemen, this is one year of Lore Forge, baby. And we're so stoked to be here. Uh, my name's Jibs, and I'm joined by Cash. This, I thought this was episode 51 and a half, but after re-listening to the show, I realized you guys bowled right over the week that I wasn't here and celebrated 50 <laughs> without me. <laughs> my fault the fire called you out. It's not my fault you got, either. You got fire aggro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very excited though. Um, and it, it's funny because sometimes like we'll take a week off, you know, for for whatever, but it really like when you count it out, been 52 weeks it has yeah it really has sunny what you look i'm baffled <laughs> you can introduce me now oh hey I'm... sunny's here hey hi <laughs> i'm sunny uh i don't understand how this works because it's been 52 episodes and one year but we've taken weeks off so what is happening here and I, why is this I calendar think... year suddenly longer uh i'm not real sure how this how this happened but here we are i think it equaled um, out between the weeks uh, for holidays, because sometimes we'll take, you know, like Christmas off. And um, I think we took one other off. Didn't we do New Year's? I don't remember. I think so. So what happened? Did did you guys do a two a day once that I wasn't here uh, for or something? <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't out our math. We do good numbers, Seriously. Sonny. I mean, is that not my job? <laughs> Accor according to... Yeah, so our first episode technically launched on August 18th. Well, that'll be when this actually drops, believe it or not. Yeah, right. I don't understand. Or nineteenth, one day after. Yeah. There's Sunny. There's an exponent in there, and maybe some parentheses. Yeah, <laughs> there's an equation. <laughs> oh well, boys, it has been a year, and to everyone who's listening, we are doing this live on Twitch. This is our one year anniversary AMA where we put out questions to everybody, and we just like wanted this is this episode's for you, for the people to celebrate and just have fun, and we'll see where things go, guys. I know that. We have an exciting year ahead. In fact, we're getting ready to have a, our one of our massive meetings that we have that we don't have very often. And when we do, usually by the end of it, we're all jazzed up and we got the future planned and everything's ready to rock and roll. We all have that's more true. work to do. We all have more work to do. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah, we get a meeting like once every like three months or something like that. And when we're done with it, we're like fired out of a cannon uh, with <laughs> ideas and, and stuff. And it is it is truly one of those things, you know, like this whole show tonight um, is going to be uh, kind of a just a talk with everyone in the chat and with each other. We ran an AMA forum inside our discord and people asked all sorts of questions. But it is kind of true that we don't get a lot of time to just, you know, hang out together and actually talk about the future and ideas and things like that. We do do the state of the owl, which is, uh, which is a once a once a month show, and and we do some of that on there. But uh, it is fun to just kind of like kick back and look at a year in review. Almost, I mean, it's been it's been a ride, really. I mean, you look at where we are now and and where we came from in cash. It's uh, it's man, I I I can't hardly believe like the things that happened over this last year i think uh i think for all of us for all three of us we, we there was such a ramp up to do this show for ashes of creation before we even launched i mean there was so much work never before in in all the times that we've been podcasting or any of the shows uh, that we've done have we had such a ramp up of activity amongst all three of us in, you know, getting our YouTube launched and at the time the website um, and uh, getting three shows under our belt before we even launched the show. And I think what, what actually ended up happening to me, the, the way it feels to me oh, is that's that how the math worked out. Yeah, we did three, three shows, shows before we launched. Three shows. Do you have any yeah. idea how long this has been bothering me? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently long enough for oh, you to cut me straight off. I'm and I know sorry, noticed. but this is like nope, sleepless okay. nights for like a week. <laughs> Hang on. Give him the phone. I'm marking it down. You can mark right, that down. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, this one, you just solved. I'm going to sleep tonight. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do what my wife does. I forgot what I was going to say. Just keep going. 
<laughs> no, I didn't forget what I was going to say. That's when you knew he I'm messed up. <laughs> I never forget what I'm going to say. Um, no, honestly, it uh, it feels like we blinked, and it's been a year. It, it truly does. We've had um, we've had a lot of work. We've had a, a lot of content. But I think the fact that we've had a lot of work and a lot of content is because we've had a lot of fun doing it all. Uh, the the game is progressing. Um, our relationships, both uh, professionally and you know as as a family with the family that we're building in in Lore Forged, has really been fuel for us. And I think that is 100% the reason why literally we blinked and it's been a year and we're going to blink and it's going to be another year and then we're going to blink. It's going to be another year and then we're going to blink and it's going to be another year and then we're going to launch the game. So <laughs> how many blinks was that? That's too many. I think you blinked six <laughs> times. <laughs> oh, we hope not. But um, no, it's just it's been a blast. Hey, man, when you're having you fun, blinking. the <laughs> clock moves very quickly. We raise the cool down on that, Sonny. Oh, Gallwood says 14 <laughs> blinks cash. Oh no, I can't, I can't do another 14 years before lunch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Please Hey, stop. we had a really cool milestone on YouTube this past week, guys. We did. This was a big deal. Um, this is something that, uh, that I, I, I think that we all had a hand in. Uh, I will say that, that cash lately has really been driving this one home. Uh, but we hit 1000 subs. Yeah. On YouTube, which was a huge deal for us. We understand that like our content is not something that everybody gets down with. There's some people when they see lore, they're like Snoreforged. <laughs> that's it for that. Yep, Snoreforged. <laughs> uh, lore forged. Boar yeah, forged. That's the one, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. I like Boar <laughs> oh. Um, but like a thousand people said, yeah, give us more lore. And that, you know, really that's really awesome. So uh, yeah. it's it's pretty cool, and that allows us to do uh, some other stuff. Some stuff opens up for us at at one thousand subs that that lets us work within YouTube's sort of algorithm a little bit better, and all sorts of stuff. But uh, honestly, you know, we're just we were we were happy making the videos as they were, and um, yeah, just a, just an awesome kind of moment, uh, and kind of cool that it happened right at one year. Um, I know that like people have certainly made it there faster and people have certainly uh, taken longer to do it, but like to do it right at one year was kind of like a weird and cool moment, I think. Yeah. Gosh, it was un totally unexpected. I you know behind the scenes was like, hey, look, we're getting close to a thousand. That's cool. And then you realize you hit 1000 on the week that you turn one. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh, what are the odds? So that was cool. Yeah, I think I think we um, I, I have no problem saying it. the the 1K mark was a. A milestone for us it was a goal yeah for us internally was to hit a thousand subs and um i was very happy to see it happen it it did kind of happen under the radar because we i guess it would be weird if i said we didn't pay attention to views and stuff like that because we look at them but it's not that often and we really don't care that much about it we're more excited just to create fun content and if people like the content they'll watch a the video if they don't then they don't we're not uh we're not like locked on those views but when we we were busy working and then we kind of glanced down and then glanced back up and we saw holy crap we're we're like approaching the thousand mark that really was a milestone for us to hit and a goal for us so um thank you if you're subbed super awesome yeah. if you're in the chat and you're not subbed you have another window on your computer you can pull up to go do that right now. So, <laughs> ready, go. It's one click away, really. I mean, it's, it's really, just one, really click one click away. <laughs> one click for smiles. Yeah, it's hard not to look at numbers like that, right? Like that's that's part of the thing that that we have uh, going on is is always this this challenge of like, okay, don't look at the numbers, don't look at the numbers. The the content we're making is the stuff that we want to make, and so yeah. it can be tricky not to do that. But then you yeah. know, like over time, you look back and you're like, holy crap, you know. Yeah. Like a lot of people saw this. Yeah. A lot of people saw this. And then on top of that, you know, every now and then you get something awesome. Like Steven says, hey, your lore videos are awesome. We all watch them. Oh, and that's like, dude, fuel. It's absolute fuel. Chef's kiss. You said it just right, <laughs> yeah. Sonny. Like, you know, you're creating for a small audience. I remember we got so much feedback and people thought it was so funny. That bit that he talked about when he was doing like this pitch for our show, right? 
Oh, he had, he had to light up his lightsaber. You lit up your lightsaber? Sorry, I forgot. You, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, all right. I forgot. It's all right. What a nerd. <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> anyway, it's funny. I was saying when uh, a few episodes ago when you were talking about, like, when we were doing that pitch for the show, like, yeah, we're going to do a show about a game that's not even out yet. And then, wait a minute. We're going to focus that niche down even more and do it about lore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Then, yep. That's exactly what it's like. Like you can't look at the numbers. Yeah. You're like it's a labor of love. It really is. I know. It's Steven Steven talks about, you know, we're looking at the lore through a keyhole. And it's like, yeah, because we're trying to fit everything we can into that turn. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh man, oh man, oh man. Hey, let's tell them about something else that's coming up. Um, so Sonny, see our private DM right now. Uh we are going to be doing something. In October. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a nod if you're cool with this one. <laughs> I guess we are. All right, we're good. All right. <laughs> Cash? Yeah. So in uh in October, we have and this is something that we've we have had planned for the better part of two years. Um this was this was before we launched Lore Forged. Um the folks who are who are in our Discord, um, we refer to we refer to like our closest friends as our sanctum folks. Um they're just close friends that we've had for years and years and years throughout everything that we've done. And like, I have no problem saying we have handpicked um, these folks. And even when we weren't doing a show, we were still hanging out and gaming and having a good time. And it's, you know, probably 25, 30, 30 people. Well, about half that number um, that uh, actually, you know, really decided to do this. We had planned a getaway for, for all of us. So the early part of October, we are going to be with, with this particular group of, of folks that are in our discord, we're going to be heading down to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And we have uh, verboed a massive cabin. And we're going to spend a week there uh, just hanging out playing D&D and probably drinking and puking. Uh, <laughs> oh, smoking no. cigars. Nope. Hanging out just kind of kind of doing our thing. But during that, so if you're in our Discord and and when that's taking place, you're going to start seeing probably a flood of photos coming in um, of this particular retreat. And um, we are also going to do our very best to record a show while we are there in the wilderness, hopefully not getting attacked by brown bears, but we're going to give it a go. <laughs> and deliver that to all of you. This is the first time in our friendship we've ever been able to be in the same place at the same time. On top of that, we're driving down together. We should stream it over our phone. Do you guys know how to stream over the phone? We can figure it yeah, out. I did a couple of B streams from my backyard. We should do that thing. We should do that thing. That'd be fun. Yeah. Bring my awesome. microphone with the dead cat on it. There you go. That makes sense. <laughs> Not a yellow flag. Actually called a dead cat. <laughs> a little fuzzy thing. Oh, I love it. It's so funny. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that'll be a thing. I'm pretty sure I have the SM58s to pull that off. Sweet. Um, we we'll three. have to talk about that because I can tell you for free that I'm not bringing like mic stands for. Everybody. No, just bring three mics and cables. We're good. Yeah. Mics and cables. We're good. We'll figure it out. Oh, but yeah, that's going to be a blast. Uh, the Smoky Mountains is a place that I've never been to, so I'm I'm kind of excited for it. And uh, and this will be this is very interesting. This will be the first time that I've actually physically been in the same place as JB at the same time. I'm going to hug your face. No. Nope. Yep. <laughs> Hips in and I will not release easily. No. Folks. Sonny, Sonny is not a hugger. He's a crier, but he's not a hugger. But, I am a crier. That is tragic. I he's not a hugger. To kick what, that habit. What he doesn't realize is that he is going to have chafe marks on his <laughs> hips oh from my, my hips. <laughs> Where's my yellow flags? Here. I have yellow flags. Oh, that's so good. There you go. Oh, he's got Ooh, it for you. you. Yellow card. Throwing that for me. Oh, that's funny. I so, and then. <laughs> <laughs> And then we actually have one more announcement, and that is um, we are getting ready to do a massive overhaul for our merch shop. So we are moving. We're moving completely. We're moving away from our current provider, um, and there are amazing things, and the quality is amazing, and we're doing it um, through a, a different outlet. 
And actually, I believe, Sonny, isn't there something regarding like their Twitch sub that they can use toward that to like discount the apparel or something like that? Yeah, if you're a member of Twitch, then you get a discount on the merch. There so you go. if you're a yeah. sub on Twitch, then you get a discount on the merch. It's that's a whole thing. We're gonna be working with it's okay if I tell them, right? Yeah, so, I don't care. yeah. yeah we're gonna yeah. be working with stream elements. Um, yep. so I've kind of been, uh, looking at, uh, at finding somebody new to do merch for us and did a bunch of research. And then we came along with stream elements and I was like, oh, well, this looks interesting and everything is like integrated and all of this other stuff. And I'm like, yeah. And we started going down the path and it's, it's, they got stickers, they got stickers, yep. people. Um, and their website doesn't suck and it goes yeah. all in, like it's all integrated. Everything's integrated with Twitch and, and all of that stuff. Um, and there's some YouTube stuff as well that I still have to figure out, but all in all, it's really cool. So I'm very excited about that. JB is our, uh, resident, uh, design wizard, and he's going to put in some time and, and migrate things over and create some cool stuff. And maybe we'll even have like a, a one year thing or something like that for a limited period of time. I'm, yeah. um, I'm, I'm very excited about it. Stream Elements does cool stuff. So, yeah, we absolutely will have a um, it wasn't ready. I wasn't able to get it ready this week in short. And with us moving providers, I didn't want to put it out anyway. So there will be a a special shirt. We did this a long time ago. Cash and I did for Lore Seekers and we're one to do it for Lore Force folks as well. There will be a some kind of like original lore, lore forged member or something, some kind of shirt, some kind of design that'll only be available for a certain amount of time for and the sticker f- for the first year and sticker and that, and then it will never ever come back. So it'll be kind of cool. Fun fact. I have an idea. Ooh, do you? <laughs> Ooh, I have these ideas from time to time friends and I bring them up live on the show. Cause that's what I do. I think we need to bring back the Warborn version of the PVP penis shirt. <laughs> what do you think about that? Son? I don't think Sonny would get would get down with that. <laughs> uh, Sometimes you just gotta let things happen. <laughs> the best just to let. Sometimes him you just gotta let him finish. <laughs> what was that shirt? Do you remember that cash? What did it say? Uh, yes, it said um, PV penis on the front, and underneath it said it's just fun to say. <laughs> <laughs> we had that for our lore seekers guild and it was a hit sonny so take that in your ghiblies oh my ghiblies are like a speed bag right now <laughs> <laughs> i'll never forget the story cash had of an older gentleman squinting reading that shirt and you just knew what he was saying <laughs> Yep. Hey, bud, what do you think of my shirt? What do you think of my shirt? I think it's offensive. (laughs) I didn't storm a beach on Normandy to have you wear that shirt. (laughs) (laughs) Sir, you were doing exactly what's on this shirt when you stormed the beach. In real life. (laughs) Thank you for your service. (sighs) Thank you for your service. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, guys, um, I really don't know how to take this or where to take it, but you want to start the AMA? Let's do it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, Sonny, lead in on this. Yeah. And then cash, you take, take it afternoon. Do your thing. Okay. Here's how it's going to go. So we had an AMA forum, uh, post in our discord. I realized that not everybody in here is on our discord. Uh, but you had an opportunity to ask questions. However, since you are all in the chat, you can go ahead and ask questions as freely as you want to. And we will occasionally snatch one up and throw it in our little chat here. And we will answer that question. We're not going to spend a ton of time on all the questions um, because we would like to hit more questions than we would long answers. I think that's fair to say, gentlemen. Is that right? It is. Tell the folks what an AMA is if they don't know. An AMA is called an Ask Me Anything. Now, you can ask anything. Boxers brief. I'm not guaranteeing that we will answer it. <laughs> That's how an AMA works. <laughs> so feel free. Knock yourself out. But uh, don't expect. There's no part of ask me anything that guarantees the answer you're looking for. <laughs> so uh, we will we will do our absolute uh, best. So. Oh, our death. Our death starts it off. What hair products are y'all using? Car buffer. I did turtle wax. <laughs> um, turtle wax. I, it's like, a, I think it's a 
Hall Mitchell. I don't know. I stole it from Henry. <laughs> I needed something like <laughs> eventually, and I and Kelly gave me that. So I don't. I think it's Paul Mitchell. I'm not real sure. I don't use much. Dresh says preface. Answers may vary. <laughs> This is true. Oh, Ooh, before we get started, I have something to share with you guys. I'm very excited about it. Oh, crap. Go ahead. See this? See this spot back here? The back of my arm? Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Well, I mean, kind of. Right. You got a lot of tattoos over there. Right there. there. Yeah. Oh, there's a blank canvas. Oh, you got to right fix there. that. Guess what I'm getting there tomorrow? Ooh, what are you getting? Well, this whole arm is a Star Wars arm. Yeah. So. I'm getting a Jawa back there tomorrow. Oh, nice. With the glowing eyes. Ooh, TD. Yep. <laughs> Good call. I'm excited. Sorry, random, but I'm excited. thought it was going to be a picture of Steven's face. With red eyes. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> no, that's a terrible idea. Please don't do that. Um, all right, let's go with the first question here. All right. Uh, As the LLC, this is from Asri. Um, we'll do Asri's and then we'll do rain downs because I forgot that's the order I put them in. Uh, Asri says, as the LLC matures, by the way, we have an LLC that's probably useful information for this question. Are you guys contemplating moving off of Patreon and setting up your own site? <gasps> yeah. Oh, is that me? Maybe. Does that mean you're picking me to do it with your finger? I don't know. Down? You're the one that just oh. went bonkers. <laughs> oh, I was doing like a fake shock face. Apparently it oh. worked. <laughs> um... I don't know how to answer this. I don't think we're moving off Patreon. No, that's not officially. Sure. I don't think we're moving off Patreon, but no. I don't mind transparency. Uh, well, <laughs> let's not go crazy with this one. There's there's no craziness. There's just transparency. Okay. We are we are talking about options for potentially bringing back a website. Entirely fair. Um, yeah, entirely fair. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen because it turns out it it might be a heavy lift. And one of the things that we have to pay very close attention to uh, and Sonny, for as hard as a time as we give Sonny, folks, he really keeps us on task That's with phenomenal. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Jibs has a very busy schedule. I now for for a temporary time have a very busy schedule. Um, and we have to really pay very close attention to bandwidth and the bandwidth that we're able to put out in in creating our own content and moving into new projects that could take from that bandwidth. And the reason being is because as three guys putting on, you know, three guys who all have full time jobs and have families with kids and other responsibilities, we have to pay very, very close attention to the things that we can handle, because when the game comes out, we don't want to start a project that would be too hard for all of us to manage for, you know, the three of us together to manage that really chunks into time that we are going to need to interact with our guild, run our guild, plan events and play the damn game. Like that is the whole reason that we're here is so that we can have a really good time and we want it to be fun and manageable. So. Again, full transparency, we are talking about some ways that we can do it, but if it turns out that doing what we want to do, I won't share that, because what we want to do is awesome. <laughs> if we do it, uh, we have to make sure that it's manageable for everybody. So, it's like not moving away from Patreon, yes, we're thinking about setting up our own site again. Sorry to mean jump on you. I was going to say, I was going to be full commit. It's like, if you open that door, you cannot shut it. There's... <laughs> There's no shutting, so it's yeah. But there's candy on the other side there's of that a door. Whole we lot do of it, candy boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you this: I mean, <laughs> there's no shortage of ideas uh, <laughs> within the three of us. That's for sure. Uh, it's it's the management of it. Um, I don't think we're we're leaving Patreon anytime soon, though. Um, there no. will always be a spot for us on Patreon because yeah. it's just such an effective site for for doing what we want to do um, on those bonus things, and and the integration with Discord is just too awesome. Uh, and, and frankly, I love the state of the owl. The state of the owl is one of my favorite things. So yeah. if anything, we will look to expand Patreon in, in the, uh, upcoming, uh, years. We just want to make sure that we don't want to expand Patreon without giving people something that's worth value. So that's ultimately the answer to that question. Cash, I'm going to ask you the next one here. Rain down says, 
since you started creating content, how would you say you have changed in real life? Has becoming a creator evolved your personality in public? Ooh. That is a really good question. I'll, I'll take the first part. Um, since you started creating content, how would you say you've changed in real life? Uh, for me, it would be a time management thing. Um, as we know, uh, as I lament about all the time, like my time right now is very, very busy. So um, learning to manage my, my time effectively uh, with my own real life schedule has been a challenge lately for me. Um, I wouldn't say that content creation has really changed my, my real life too, too much other than when I first started learning how to do a lot of the stuff, uh, when I first started to learn how to do audio and when I first started to learn how to make videos, I was offering myself up a lot, like at work. If something needed to be done, if a video needed to be done or somebody had questions about, you know, like podcasting or something like that. I would be the first to go, I know how to do that. Well, my bandwidth has shrunk into a keyhole. So <laughs> I tend to keep my mouth shut a little bit more because if you know how to do something, people will definitely take you up on it. But it doesn't mean that I still wouldn't help somebody. So in real life, the things that has changed is that my skill set has increased exponentially by doing all of this stuff. I would have no problem helping somebody make a video or, or something like that, or teaching somebody um, the way that we do those things. Second part of that question, has becoming a creator evolved your personality in public? In my line of work, I kind of already had to be okay with public speaking. Um, it has definitely made me better at it. I mean, cause you know, we're talking to uh, 70 some odd people right now. Um, and I'm fine. Like uh, this is my element. I enjoy doing this. Uh, I enjoy talking in front of people. I did have a moment that I thought was going to be pretty gnarly at, uh, at one point, it was probably about six months ago. We had an award ceremony and I just, I was, it was for the department, the fire department that I work for. It was an award ceremony for like calls that we've been on and life-saving things and stuff like that. Um, I was not scheduled to be on the mic but there were city council people there, very high profile people from our city. And in uh, all, all told, there was probably about, probably about 750 people in the, at this dinner. And they were talking about this call and I had happened to, I was on the call, this emergency call that we had gone on. And my chief just said, you know, there's nobody better to tell this story <laughs> than you. And he just pointed right at me and said, come on up. And I was like, excuse me, what? <laughs> so that was, a, that was probably the largest crowd I've ever had to speak in. And, and I, I was very surprised that I just wasn't nervous, told the story, laughed, joked, everybody loved it. And I got off the stage and I was like, you know what? I think that's podcasting. Mm -hmm. I think that's content creation that I was able to just step up there and do that. So yeah, I suppose there are some things that have, that have changed, you know? Mm. It's good. JB, has your life changed? Uh, have, has your personality changed in real life as a result of uh, content creation? I would say, yeah, I would say absolutely. I remember when I first started and it was, you know, 12 years ago and nobody wanted to, two things. Number one, I, at the time, I just wanted to be heard. I remember being 24, I think, I think it was. And I just remember listening to, I think it was called Wildstar Radio, because Wildstar was getting ready to drop. And I just remember it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Actually, no, sorry, rewind that. It was Star Wars, The Old Republic, with your guys' show. Sonny, your show was out there. Sonny's Diner and Cash, you were doing um, Old Republic Radio. And I just remember wanting to be heard. And just for whatever reason, it just interests me. And so I reached out to you, Sonny, for... A lot of guidance on some things, and uh, you know, you really helped me. I had a phone call with you while I was in Las Vegas. You did, yeah. That's how I got started, and I would say over time, confidence was absolutely a part of it. And exactly what Cash said, like you, you had, you can kind of like mentally go in this place now where it's like go into quote unquote show mode. You know, like you flip the switch. We've always said that behind the scenes, oftentimes over the years, that no matter how bad your day is, no matter how you feel, no matter whatever has happened. The moment you flip that switch, your audience gets the best version of you, period. And it 
really transcends into real life. You know, when you're talking in front of people or you're doing an interview, like you just mentally tell yourself, okay, showtime. And then you just go and do your thing. I think overall, the thing that really over for me personally, that's really changed over the years is I've for the longest time I spent being a student of the craft of podcasting and audio. And that's always going to be the case. But I think over time, my heart truthfully has has moved to really wanting to help people learn this craft and help them excel at this craft. Because back when we started, it was every man for themselves. Like nobody was sharing anything. It was very cutthroat. We know what that was like. You guys can remember that from the SWOTOR days. Like, <laughs> and it carried on in the wild star and, you know, it just all these things. And, but really my heart more now than more than anything really is just to teach people this craft. And, and like the other day, my son was like, dad, will you teach me to podcast? And I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 buddy. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just burn right in my eyeball. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you a topic. Yep. The war in Bosnia. Not yep. the civil, nor a war. You have to say the yep. civil war in Bosnia. Oh. You have to say the civil war in Bosnia. Not the <laughs> civil, nor war. You always forget that part. Regardless. Wow, you're, you are I abrasive. I am on you tonight. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> this is you twice. are abrasive. Oh. <laughs> But long story short, I'll wrap up. I'll wrap up by a bit. And then, Sonny, I want to hear from you. But I think if there's anything I would love to do more than anything is that is teach people so they can succeed and that they can have that show that takes off and that just changes their life. And they meet people and they have fun and they grow. It's just that's where my heart's at. I think. I, I want to tag onto that because um, I, I think one of the things that that we that we really do enjoy doing is helping others. Um, there is there's no secret that we're the old men in the space for sure. Um, and, and along with that though, comes a lot of years of podcasting for us. And one of the things we've always tried to do in any space that we've ever been in is, is help people if they ask for the help. Um, if someone's struggling with something or if we, you know, we think somebody can improve somewhere and, and they ask like, yes, like this is how we do it. These are the things that you could do to, to make it better. And, the competition part just drops right to zero in, in those situations. And one of the things that is very unique about the Ashes of Creation space is that there doesn't really seem to be any competition. It's just creators helping creators. So when you, want, when you really want to get down to brass tacks on it and talk about how transparently the content creator space is here, it's the best we've ever seen. I've never seen more friendship and collaboration between content creators. I mean, there's a we have a content creators um, Discord that we're a part of, and there is a space and there is a channel in there for nothing but helping others out with questions or equipment or processes or whatever. Because in the long run, friends, the better your content creators are for Ashes of Creation the more eyes get put on this game. And that is everybody's end goal is to make this game successful yep. and make more people interested in it. So it's it's kudos. If there's any other content creators out there that are, that are with us tonight watching, just thank you yeah. for having that, that thought and for having that, um, uh, that presence to just be helpful and collaborative. It's pretty cool. Agreed. Agreed. You elevate everybody and then everybody, you know, grows. Everyone goes upward. So. Right. What about you, Sonny? No doubt. Uh, oh, well, let me, I, I won't take long on this one. I, I, honestly, like I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing public speaking for so long. I can't even remember. Like I was on radio my Do the radio first voice. day in college in high school i was on like in a television studio and like it's just kind of been the public speaking thing for me has always been the way and my career has kind of moved around that as a trial attorney you know is all public speaking and all of this stuff what i will say is this that it, it, doing this makes me so sharp 
Like I'm just every week I'm having conversations with you guys and I'm thinking and I'm just my my brain is firing the whole show and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But like like Cash said, when you're put on the spot, like I'm never put on the spot. It's just it's just go. And and most people see that with me. I don't know. Like, it's hard to see that in yourself. But I, I will say that, like, when other people when other people are looking for somebody to say a few words, like it just always kind of ends up that way. It's like, Hey, go. And I'm like, okay. And you just go. And it's so natural now because this is just a constant flowing thing. Somehow we have become like elder statesmen though, which is nice. Um, we, we aren't the most popular on YouTube. We aren't the most viewed thing ever, but you know, we've been doing it for a long time and people do have questions and we will always, 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 do our best to answer your questions. Um, if you are learning, if you have a show with two people listening, we've been there. So we are we are no better than you are. We're just further down the road. <laughs> that's the only difference. Um, and so that's been really good. But I do want to move on to some other questions here. We got so many questions. So I'm going to hit you with a quick one here. You ready, JB? Yeah. Straight or curly fries? This is from Kawaru. Oh, oh well, if I'm thinking unhealthy, curly. Cash, straight or curly fries? I kind of like them both. Can I pick them both? No. Podcasting is about strong takes. <laughs> okay. Need a strong take out of you. Straight and well done. Wow. You Correct have, answer no. is curly fries. Well Moving done. On. Who's <laughs> well done fries? What is this? What's wrong That's with California you? <laughs> talking right there. Who says that? It has nothing to do with the state. No one says anything <laughs> like that in America <laughs> except California. No offense, Californians. Planet Orphan over here. A lot of heat for being a Canadian. I can assure you that, like, it's about the okay. state. <laughs> okay. Is is it, now we're do you talking say fries like medium now. rare? Like, do you have you ever? Like, no, what? I no. I say I want them well cooked. You I or, don't. You order your fries at a specific cook. Yes. Range. You know why? Because fries are an absolute treat for me. I don't eat them very often, but when I do, I don't want a freaking floppy <laughs> fry. I want to hold it up and have so that scary. thing be erect. You're such a Who's high in health. the back temp measuring your fries? <laughs> You're such a high hey, health. I don't care what kind of wizardry they're doing in the back. I just want that fry to stand straight out when I'm holding it into my mouth. I don't want it to flop onto my lower lip. 14 year old is like, he wants what? <laughs> well done. You know what? <laughs> you okay. guys can seriously. <gasps> Moving on. What a medium rare fry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Cheryl. This one's from the chat. <gasps> Cheryl says, given that we don't have an Ashes of Creation score or soundtrack yet, what music puts you in the mind of the game? I'll go to Cash first on this one. Uh, two Steps from Hell. Anything from Two Steps from Hell. <laughs> yeah. <Wow>. Really? <laughs> yes. Strong take. Have, there you go. Way to, way to <laughs> heed the advice. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> Have you not heard Two Steps from Hell? No. <laughs> Interesting strategy, no. Cut. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> I okay, I cannot be more specific than to name an actual band. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're doing it. You have Do yourself a favor. If you have not heard Two Steps from Hell, go to Spotify or whatever medium that you use for music and look for a playlist by Two Steps from Hell. Conifer that it. gets Conifer me in the mode. It is, is, it is fantasy reborn um all right i i like it jb um so i am i vary a lot it depends on what i'm looking for and i'm actually going to post my go-to in the chat here but for me like what why would <laughs> what did I miss? i'm sorry planendorf is just shredding me right now in the <laughs> chat please continue <laughs> uh, no it. let no let's detail it what did planendorf say sunny <laughs> Cash, give me an opinion. Cash gives opinion. Sunny, Cash, wrong. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's exactly good. what's happening to me tonight. JB, what music puts you in Ashes of Creation right now? So I posted my go to playlist in uh, the chat. Oh. It's a Spotify playlist. It's a fantasy ambience. And sometimes if I'm not listening to that, sometimes it's dark academia piano. Sometimes it's. Um, it could be uh, lately I've been listening to the um, Ruined King soundtrack. 
again mm. from um, the books and also the video game from um, Riot. Uh, yep, so, League of Legends. Yeah. Yep, yep. So really, it varies, but yeah, those are those are kind of my go-to's right now. I mean, you you, you mailed in a playlist <laughs> like. Way to way to come prepared, Boy Scout. <laughs> well, I had a, I brought it up on my phone while he was devouring you alive. <laughs> I give That's you impressive. a band and Jibs and Jibs BDs me with a freaking I know old playlist didn't. link. Absolutely, that energy. Yeah, well, uh, you know. uh, I uh, <laughs> I have been enjoying, believe it or not, the soundtrack to a lot of my little city building games. My survival city building games have been spectacular for soundtracks like Manor Lords and oh, that's uh, a good Foundation one. and all of these games. I'm just like, mm -hmm. they're just so good now. I don't know what the deal is with these things. I'm playing Settlement Survival right now, and I, I don't know when games started to just get good, like ambient medieval soundtracks, and there's like all sorts of tracks, and it doesn't get boring. Mm -hmm. And wow. Man, yeah, like just that's what I've been listening to to put me in the game. Normally, yeah, so I would turn the music like way off and just have the ambient sound. But like for some reason, these games are really doing really well. Yeah, you know, what's interesting about the Manor Lord soundtrack that when they started creating that, it was actually doing they were doing just a bunch of samples. And then it like somehow it just like developed into then they were using a full orchestra. And it is one of the best soundtracks to come out in 2024 yeah. hands down like whoa so good so so good yeah, yeah it's it's spectacular and i think um you know that that main that main track for ashes of creation that we all hear that starts mm -hmm. with the piano and just it just gets us all super super pumped um from what i understand and i could be wrong but from what i understand that was music that they had purchased on soundcloud as a placeholder for what bear mccrary is going to do um I hope they keep that original track. I, I truly do, because it has become so iconic for Ashes of Creation mm -hmm. that every time I hear it, like I, I, I literally will get chills. Like I, I love that, that score. But I will say this, with Bear McCrary at the reins of the music for Ashes of Creation, folks, we did a video on him. We've talked about him on the podcast before and some of the projects that he's done. Please go take a look at Bear McCrary's um, resume. It will blow your mind. Just the other day, and I'd even forgotten, but just the other day, I'd say probably a couple weeks ago, my wife and I are, are doing a run through again of the original Walking Dead uh, seasons. And that blew my mind again to see in the credits musical scores by Bear McCrary. And I was like, G -g -g -g. Yeah. my wife goes, what? And I go, it's Bear. He's doing the music for Ashes. Bear, big bear. And she goes, really? <laughs> and I said, yeah, this guy's doing the music for Ashes. So I was super pumped to see it. But I mean, the guy has a, a, a curriculum vitae that will blow your mind when it comes to soundtracks for games and movies and series that he's done. So yeah. take a look. I'm absolutely confident that we are in the best hands. We're going to have some insane scores. Speaking of, speaking of that, did you see that in the Bard video when Steven turned up the music? For You heard that brief portion. It was just a real, and I don't know if it was confirmed that that was part of Bear's music for or for his placeholder, but if you go back to that Bard video, there's a point where he turns that music up, and it is good. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move into the next question here. This one's from Gallwood, and Jibs, I'm coming to you first with this one. Where did everyone's name come from and i assume oh. he means screen name yeah so mine started out i met it was 2012 i joined mog nation uh which cat which was, was meant multiplayer online gaming it was a community where um that stemmed from uh, the swotor guild that cash was running and sunny was now a part of and so it was just large community of just mmo gamers and i didn't know what to call myself so i'm like hmm well, I guess I'll just do JB. That's my initials. And then that's how I have been known forever. And then one day, Cash sounded out JB and turned into Jibs. And so that's <laughs> me. <laughs> IR smart. Is that true? Is it's, that it's 100% true. Oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. So it's a mix between JB or that. Jibs, whatever you want to call me. Either way, it's the same thing. So, yeah, that's uh, that's about the long and short of it. Sonny? 
Um, so mine's a little more complicated. Mine came uh, as a result of an old boss that I had in radio when I was in college. And he hated going to the grocery store because his name was Greg Runyon. And his real name was Greg Runyon. And he was on the radio as Greg Runyon. And so he'd write like a checkout and it would be Greg Runyon on it. And then the cash register person would be like, hey, you're Greg Runyon. <laughs> he's like, ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> and he hated it. Oh. So he said, like, if you ever get into this gig, make sure you give yourself a fake name. <laughs> so I'm like, OK. So later on, uh, I uh, I ended up uh, starting a podcast. Um, after, it was after law school. I started Sonny's Diner and I needed a name. And my name is not Sonny. Uh, but Sonny comes from a Paul Simon song from the album uh, Rhythm of the Saints. Uh, there's a song called The Obvious Child. And I just really, really loved that song. It was an album that I had on cassette tape when I was a kid. And uh, one of the names in the song, one of the characters' names is Sonny. And I always thought that was cool. And so I just went with Sonny with a U instead of a no. Uh, and Ravencourt... Uh, actually comes from my father who went to a boarding school in Winnipeg, Manitoba called Raven's Court, uh, which is very much like Hogwarts. Uh, it, he came from a lot of money and all the kids went to boarding school. And so there's a boarding school in Winnipeg called Raven's Court. And so I became Sonny Ravencourt. And uh, that's how that started. And I just rolled with it forever. And that's what it is. Huh. You're a wizard now, Sonny. <laughs> You're a wizard, Sonny. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Mine's not as cool as that. <laughs> Seriously, not as cool <laughs> as that. Um, so cash came from uh, two things. The first thing is this was it was actually the name for my original character in Star Wars The Old Republic. I wanted to think of like a really cool Star Warsy name. Um, so the cash with a K came from uh, my love of Johnny Cash. I'm a huge fan of Johnny Cash. And I figured, well, let's make it a little different. So let's go cash with a K. Simple as that for the first name. Um, the second name, which I don't really ever use anymore, but was the second name of this particular character, was Kalar. And that Kalar came from the uh, Jedi Knight during the, um, uh, the Clone Wars movie. And his name was Agent Kalar. And he done got killed, but... <laughs> <laughs> I really liked him. I thought he was a super cool Jedi. And uh, so I named uh, my last name after Agent Kalar. So Cash Kalar is where that came from. And then the Cash just kind of stuck. You don't hear a lot of the Kalar anymore. The Cash Kalar. No, he got died. <laughs> He's donezo. <laughs> no longer in the movies. Are you going to bring back Cash Kalar for Ashes of Creation? No. No, I have an, another name, which the folks in our Discord know, but I'm not really ready to release that publicly yet because mm. I don't want it stolen. I have actually had that happen by some SO freaking B that I could not stand and kicked out of our Old Republic Dads Guild during the time. And when the game launched, he stole your name, he went and stole my name. Yep. Oh! Ooh, stole my name. A low yep. blow. What? <laughs> Super low blow. Like if I was ever to see that guy in real life, take him into a dark alley and give him a really hug. give him a good piece Beat of my your mind. old character <laughs> name out of him or what? <laughs> oh man, Look, man, hey, peace, love, and honeybees, bro. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. All right, JB. Since we all know that you uh, are the most apt to have a don't, how can i put this don't you do it to change your character oh, class I'm done. on a whim i'm out <laughs> we're gonna ask you thanks this for listening to the show everybody as of the bard showcase this is from Azri also as of the bard showcase which race archetype are you looking at right now uh can, can i can i pass can nope. you pass? No, nope. this is an I AMA. We get to ask fries. you anything, but right. there's no rules on answering. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> at my heart, at my core, I'm I'm very much a defender, a protector. Um This week. This is why I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> <laughs> he was going. He really had him going, Cash. <laughs> you know what? I was gonna pick something. Rogue. Rogue this week. <laughs> Rogue what? What what race? Maybe Rogue Bard. Um, Nakua. 
Nakua. A Nakua rogue bard. Yep. Got it. <laughs> He's going to be a dwarf paladin. We guarantee. Uh, ooh. Paladin, though. Dwarf paladin could be pretty hot. Uh, Cash, what are you feeling right now as of the bard showcase? Um, Has not changed for me. Either Ranger Ranger or Ranger Rogue or Rogue Ranger. And Race? Mm, Aelin. Which has changed. That has changed, which I've, I've recently talked about. But I was going to yeah. go Pyrae and I... I Not feeling the horns changed. or what? No, because because I have I have so much inspiration right now from all those Driz books with Artemis and Trary that I, I really, really want a human. So it could oh, change. I like it. It could change. I like Legolas too. <laughs> kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It's like a tree coming out of his head. Uh, <laughs> I am, uh, as of the Bard Showcase, I am feeling rogue. Um, I didn't see what I wanted to see out of the Bard, um, specifically for my game style. I saw a lot of awesome Bard, uh, and I definitely see a reason for a lot of other people to pick it, but it just didn't look like it's going to be what I want for that sort of dueling type of personality gameplay that I have. And I almost always go human. So alien humans are looking real good for me right now, but there is a world in which it's just too much fun to role play as a tavern owner. That's a Nakua. So there might be that too. That's a, that's, that's a, we'll have to see how that one plays out. Maybe we'll see that in alpha too, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind of what it is. A, a, a female Aelin bard would be pretty much what I was born to play, I think, in this game. But we'll have to see. Nakua is 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 very attractive to me. All right. De La Luna with a question. This one came from the forum. And, <laughs> and uh, this is a good one. What is uh, first of all, I like when people use y'all in a question. So what is y'all's most memorable off script moment? whether from a sudden tangent in the conversation or a general derailment from a viewer comment. What are you talking about? We don't derail from viewer <laughs> comments. That's crazy talk. <laughs> JB, do you have a moment that you can think of that was off script? I do. And it was Sonny Ravencourt telling me this. T- and I just want to pull specifically from this year. Sonny Ravencourt going on an eight minute tangent that resulted in someone following him to his house. And then just ending in a real weird fashion. And then Cash and I looking at him like, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Like, what is this? <laughs> and ever since that time, anytime you tell a story, that has become the label for me. Like, oh, here we go. Let's see where we see where he takes us. <laughs> see where it goes. I specifically remember that one. I remember me looking at you, Jibs, and then we were actually like real life concern for Sonny's safety of him recognizing like 10 miles away from his home that he had some strange person tailing him (laughs) and then directing them right to his front driveway. And then she proceeded. I don't know if you guys hadn't heard the story. It's, it's kind of awesome. This lady proceeded to eventually run into Sonny's house with her car. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're like, dude, oh. why did you lead her right to your doorstep? <laughs> yeah. The most sacred place. Yeah. Hey, here's where was, I live. It was at that moment I knew I had screwed up. <laughs> 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 when I turned into my driveway and she turned in with me, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. What a trip, man. Oh. Yeah. This this was a this was kind of a, a tough one for me. But um, Alex and chat had a favorite one that they liked and that was when i told the story of dropping my my iphone out of a helicopter that was a good one that was a good one i laughed Definitely. so hard at that yeah <laughs> that is actually a, a true story friends and luckily uh said iphone did not land uh in the city it landed in the wilderness but i literally dropped my iPhone off the deck of uh, of our helicopter, and um, I didn't realize it till we got back to the airport, and I didn't have my phone. And then I did the find my iPhone on one of my coworkers' <laughs> phones, and I can see my phone. It's 
survived, probably looking up at the sky, going, right. "Not dead, <laughs> just, just severely like, bummed." She gone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we we literally it, we literally like you want to know where your your tax paying dollars go. We literally got back in the helicopter and went back. <laughs> got it. They hoisted me back down, and I looked for it for like half an hour while the heli- helicopter landed. Oh and I got on the radio. I was like, "No dice, come pick me up." I like but, that you you basically dropped like a brick from space. <laughs> yeah, like which it could have killed somebody. Yes, which is that is like. It's not funny, right? Like I was thanking God that that it had dropped in the wilderness and not on anybody. But um, yeah, like major problem. Needless to say, I do not carry my phone in that pocket anymore on the helicopter. <laughs> 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 I carry it somewhere oh else. But, oh, that's good. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was actually that's, a real thing. Tested Weevil coming in with the subs. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you buddy. are amazing. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. Did we thank the people at the beginning of the show? Oh my gosh, subs? we forgot. We um, didn't do that. We should do we that. We wrote it, it down. I even wrote it down. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So how do? All I- right. I will tell the story. Then yeah, you have the list, and yeah. we'll thank all the people Copy. because I apologize for that. We we definitely do want to to thank some of the people here. Uh, no, we want to thank all the people. Not our just de- some of the people. Our death wants a refund. Oh, well, our death can take it up with his attorney. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a Twitch stream and I can't remember why I just decided to let go on this one, but I told like a half hour, like CSI story from this, this crazy death scene that I had worked, uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I was working as a, as a medical examiner investigator and I can't, I have to this day i have no idea why on that stream it just happened but it it became this thing where i started telling this story and then pretty soon people are like in the 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 numbers the numbers are going up and people are just listening to it and there's there's questions in the chat and it just kind of went on and on and on and then the thing ended and i'm like and that's the stream follow our show for ashes of creation (laughs) content (laughs) It's <laughs> just like, what just happened here? People are throwing up. <laughs> it was this. Oh my it gosh, was this Sonny. Crazy story. It involved organized crime and German bank fraud and like uh, <laughs> televisions and, oh. and and like the coldest day of the year. And oh yeah, it was a. Oh, it, it's a that story is a riot. Um, but yeah, like it was a. It was it was just a moment where it went completely off the rails on the Twitch stream. You know what though? I I do I love I love that about us and our our friendship um the three of us and the way that we feel about our community because there's there's a lot of folks out there that that can be very very private with things and i think that the three of us have a lot of fun sharing some of the stories from our real life and it's just like right now like this entire show is dedicated to us pulling the curtain back so you guys you know get maybe a little bit more um view as to who we are as people and and the things we do in life and and um so i just i really enjoy that as as our our friendship grows and our friendship is exponentially growing as we get to work together all three of us but also exponentially our friendship is growing with all the folks that you know show up and have are interested in that kind of stuff and we don't mind a little transparency so jay <laughs> We lost JB. Okay, <laughs> we'll do oh, yeah. uh, we'll do <laughs> Wizzy's Wizzy's question here. Well, or, look, let's do the thing. Oh, hang on. We, yeah, let's let do, do the thing. things first. Um, okay. All right. Let, oh yeah. Sorry. See, this is what happens. Let me go through the roundup like goldfish. here. Goldfish. Uh, <laughs> Gooback with five community gifted subs. Wataru for twenty one months sub. Um, Frode out for a follow. Uh, anonymous gifter. Thank you so much for the one gifted sub. Uh, of course, the hype train's carrying on. Wizzy McNasty, cheer 200 bits. AV Gaming gave out five community gifted subs. Hype train's still going. Gooback gave out another five uh, gifted subs. Hype train's still going. Mage Taker, follow. Thank you so much. Insane Axeman resubscribed for five months at tier one. Says happy one year anniversary. I have had an amazing time being part of the Forge, Ham, Forge fam. Much love, brother. That's awesome. Um, on screen, uh, da, 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 AV used 40 bits. Thank you. Wataru gave out five gifted subs. 
Uh, AV Gaming <laughs> cheered 100 bits. Uh, our death resubscribed for one month. Thank you so much, Ezekiel King. Thank you so much for the prime sub. This just keeps going. Conniff, thank you so much for the resubscribe. Tark, thank you so much for the two months. And Insignius, the wizard followed. Thank you so much. And Tested Weevil with the five gifted subs. Goodness gracious. Nikes. You guys are normally, amazing. Normally we wouldn't list it off like that, but like tonight is is one of those nights where it is just as much about you guys as it is about yeah, it us. Is. Thank you for sure. so very, very much for uh, making all of this possible over a year. We are spending a lot of that money on a twitch rebuild which should be done in maybe a week or two or something oh, like we're that talk Just, about doing a thing dag nabbit we've i'm sorry i jumped right on you but this is a thing this is this is another thing that that we've been uh, working on behind the scenes is a complete twitch rebuild yeah. so i'm very excited about that um and we have some stuff uh, that we can kind of show people, but not really. It's sort of one of those things where it, it isn't really a thing until it's until it's completed. So we'll be very excited about that. But that is uh, that is definitely where a lot of that stuff is going. All right, Wizzy's question: If you could name an obtainable in-game title, I love this question, by the way. If you can name an obtainable in-game title, what would it be, and how should it be obtained? JB. Warmaster. Ooh. That's Ooh. a good one. And I want it to be 100,000 kills. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it's got to be. Do you think that you've ever gotten that many kills in a I've game? Gotten Do close. you think that in yeah. Warcraft you've got yeah. 100,000 kills? I think I'm at 70,000. Wow. Yeah. That's a gnarly title. That's a good answer to that question. Cash, you got anything that good? I don't think it's that good. It kind of, it, it rhymes with, <laughs> with War Master. <laughs> or if you have a speech impediment, it could be the same thing. <laughs> Is it War I will we like, I will we like war, you guys. So I would say I would want to go and do all the quests and be a War Master. Perfect. Lore master. Lore what master you... for sure. Hands down. I know it's a copy of World of Warcraft, but I think in order to obtain it, you have to do something very similar, which is complete a certain number of quests, certain quest chains within the game uh, and within each zone in order to obtain said title maybe even take down certain world bosses and do certain pve content in order to obtain lore master but yeah every game that i play every mmo that i play i always look for the lore master title and see what you got to do to obtain it that's mine it's boring sorry no that's it's a good a, one that's a good one yeah it is it's it's not gonna be any more boring than mine mine is going to be chair of the reserve uh, I think that I would like the title Chair of the Reserve. So um, it is it is a political position inside the United States as Chair of the Federal Reserve. It's the person that basically is the head economist uh, of the country. And I think that if you can get in the 1% of money in bank, that you get the title of Chair of the Reserve. That would be a cool, That's, cool wow. title. Wow, yeah, I like that. 1%. So there might be multiple people with that title, but it's an achievable title, right? But you got to be in the one percent. So that uh, I would love that title. That would be super cool to have. Proctees in chat says Sunny wants to be furniture. <laughs> chair, yep, chair <laughs> of the reserve. <laughs> oh man, that's good. What else do you want to do here? What do we got? Uh, we got one from Ioana that says, "What was the gaming experience that got you into this besterist hobby?" Underline besterist. In the world and on what medium did you play it? Ooh. Come uh, to okay. Yeah. I will go with this one. My earliest gaming memory. Uh I had everyone else, everyone else had a Sega or probably had a Nintendo Entertainment System, the old NES. Well, I had the Sega Master System. Uh I was the kid that had a Sega. And uh, very excited about um, 
very excited about the Sega and there was a game and I remember, I don't know what time of year it was, but I know on a Wednesday, I was going to Winnipeg to see my grandmother. And on that Wednesday, we were going to go to the mall and I was going to get Sega baseball. And it was, I think it was just called baseball <laughs> because it was, I mean, these are the first consoles ever, right? Like they didn't have like fancy names. They just had baseball and you could play baseball and there were like different people you could get in there there was a guy named fleet that was like super fast and a guy that hit you know monster home runs and everything and all i know is that it was associated with wednesday and it was on the sega master system big big fan of baseball wow yeah i, I don't know expect- just like a core memory unlocked in there right huh cash I would have to say the there are two games that really, really hooked me. Uh, one was fantasy, and then one was just oh, just overall gaming and like puzzle solving and and like the first like world bosses and stuff that I ever got to fight. So, the first one is Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear. Oh, um, I just I remember being a young kid and just looking through the through all the guides and. And I remember one trip I went, I used to go to, um, to the, uh, Colorado river a lot, uh, in Arizona and we'd go boating. And I remember being such, so addicted to metal gear at the time that I was just, I was on the last area and I had to, I had to go through this maze area. And every time you went through the maze and you did it correctly, it would unlock this, the last boss. And I hadn't quite gotten there yet. So I had this Nintendo Power that had a guide with a map in it. And I remember I would go into the cabin in the boat to get out of the sun. And I would just pop open that Nintendo Power and study that map like (laughs) it was my freaking job. And I remember getting home after that particular trip. And I had that map memorized. I knew exactly where to go when I beat the final boss. So super elated moment for me. Um, And the other one was just absolute uh, nuts and bolts. Legend of Zelda. Oh, Oh, yeah. With with the gold cartridge that you had to Mm -hmm. blow in and put it in. Like halfway down. And hit the button and that thing would fire up and i would ju- i just loved zelda so those are probably the two console games that truly hooked me and zelda probably was the one that got me interested in what high fantasy even was i had no idea at the time i was a kid but yeah man those are my two mm. i'm gonna go with elder scrolls morrowind on xbox that is one of my staples um, that brought me into the world of like what open world felt like back then. And oh my gosh, I accidentally killed this person and I can never do this quest line kind of open world. Um, and then also I will say Star Wars The Old Republic. Playing that on Xbox over and over and over again, playing with every different companion, you know, like getting close to them, seeing how that would affect your story. Like Are that, you talking about Knights of the Old Republic? No, I'm sorry. Knights of the Old Republic, yes. Like that to me, those two games were just so monumental for me uh, in so many ways. And yeah, even the second Knights of the Old Republic, I still really enjoyed that. But like, um, yeah, I would say those two, both on Xbox. Um, th- I could pick a, a ton of different mediums, but those two games. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man. Knights of the Old Republic. I So I was in law school when the second one or maybe even the first and the second one came out because they came out pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I would take on Thanksgiving break, I would leave my place and I would go to Kelly's place for vacation. She lived in the same town, (laughs) but I would just stay at her place for like four or five days. And I remember just binging through one of the KOTOR games. I think it was the second one. And man, those games were so good. Like that brought me a love for the doctors and Bioware and all of that stuff. And it was just like that, that sent me on a path uh, that uh, who knows, I might not have ever done a podcast had it not been for playing Knights of the Old Republic. That's valid. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just such a huge influence on my gaming life. Yeah. Just 
just can't express that enough. All right, here's a fun one. This is from Axeman. He says, if the three of you were to buy a dude ranch, what would it be called? Cash. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> These questions are so out of left field. <laughs> I like um, What is this? <laughs> All right. Buy a dude ranch. Mm. I, I got it. <laughs> right. I got it. Okay. All right. Smooth scalps and saddles ranch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Send it. <laughs> I did. JB, got a ranch name for us? Hips in hug corral. Nope. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chafed hips <laughs> and loose lips. <laughs> And we've entered after dark. Welcome yep. to the one year, everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the uh, the nerdy steer. <laughs> That's a yellow Straight flag. Straight knees and the bee's knees. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, no, we're moving on. All right. <laughs> okay. Katie says, "What is the lore that you want to see expanded upon first? In Ashes of Creation, what what section of the Ashes of Creation universe do you want to see them uh, unlock a little bit as far as lore goes first, Cash? I think the low hanging fruit would be the gods, uh, especially on the heels of my last video on the names of the missing gods and what their influences could be in the universe. But I'm not going there. I really hope to see the story of Sanctus expanded upon where what's going we on in came sanctus? from yes okay. what's going on in sanctus i want i want to know locales i want to know um uh political climate i want to know all kinds of stuff about sanctus because that is where us as adventurers have spent all of our lives before the portals reopen and then we go explore this new magical land on vera so I think it's very, very important to establish a backstory for Sanctus. Hmm. Okay. JB. I like that one. Um, so I've been working on a video that's been put on the back burner because I'm trying to do my next history of uh, class video. But the video that's on the back burner is called Under the Frost. It's a pre-order pack that they came out with a long, long time ago. The premise is like there is these ancient things these old things that are and granted all these packs were flavor text right however i'm saying if like if there's something i'd love to see expand upon it'd be this um there's ancient things old things deadly things in the mountains of vera and what that looks like you know like that i think is something that i would love to see and yeah of course the low-hanging fruit you know the gods and, and whatnot but um i think yeah like what are the ancient things that are hidden away at peaks inside mountains and things that you know, people haven't seen or normally see. So, yeah, I think that's what I want to do. I want to know more about the Nakua. I do. I want to know how you end up getting island dwarves. <laughs> I really do. I think that that would be super fun. Um, I, I think that that would be something that uh, that's unique to this game. Um, there's a lot of stuff in here that is like fantasy sort of tropes that, that we love and it wouldn't be a fantasy game without it, but this one's different. And so I'm really kind of curious about the Nakua. I want to see more. I want to know more about the Nakua. So that's my, we that's good call. We definitely know some of the base lore the, of the Nakua and we can just dive into a short little lore lesson about them. They were, they were, they lived among the Dunir for a mm -hmm. long time and a lot of them did not do very well in the confines of the mountain or of mountain life and they they wanted sand between their toes so they basically said peace we're out and then they went and you know, they went to live the island life which i think is awesome because if you're gonna have if you're gonna have characters making or if you're gonna have a race a part of a race make an exodus to another area the choice of island life mm -hmm. especially for a fantasy mmo is such a unique choice yes. that nobody has tapped into this is what so, i'm saying right like it's yeah. so different it's that awesome. there's got to be room for awesome lore in there like it yeah. just hasn't been done before and and i think that that is something rare 
that this game has managed to like i haven't seen a lot but they're like they're they put it out there they're like this is a thing so it's coming yeah especially with the racial influence of the south pacific like are you kidding me it is going to be awesome i'm very excited about that uh all right here's one from wataru I like this one a lot too. Of all the games you ever played, what is the character class that you didn't think you would like, but ended up enjoying it and why? And I will start with Cash first on this one. I probably can't say Ranger, huh? No, because you thought you would like Ranger. So name a class that you didn't think you'd like, but you did, and why did you like it? I love Ranger. It's amazing. Yes, we um, know you love Rangers. I love Ranger. <laughs> I love Bo. Um, let me think. Let me think. Um, you know, honestly, this one, I guess it's kind of low-hanging fruit too, but this this brings me back to, to Warcraft. I am not a melee guy, but one, when I got a taste of rogue stealth, I was like, ooh, this is fun. Being able to sneak by stuff, and stabby stabby and insta stun perma stun oh my gosh super fun um yeah i'd probably say for me it's because i'm more of a range player so whether i'm playing a druid or an arcane base class or a ranger i just tend to navigate towards range classes so that one surprised me that i liked I like the mechanics of rogue and mechanics of true stealth so much. Very cool. JB? Mm, paladin. So I had never really played a paladin, like seriously played a paladin until World of Warcraft Shadow Le- uh, Shadowlands. I said Shadow Legends. I feel like that's a mobile game. But anyway. <laughs> it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, so uh, anyway, Shadowlands was out. I had never played one, and I'll just never forget. I'll never forget this memory ever in my life fighting on in um, the lumber mill of uh, Arathi Basin. And it was me and a friend of mine at the time on his Rep Paladin as well and watching eight people turn and run when it was just the two of us. It was, you just felt so dominating and it was just incredibly fun. And ever since then, the fact of basically a warrior priest, someone who protects other people but has kind of like those spiritual connections to it, really grabbed a hold of me. So... Uh, absolutely paladin. I am going to go with warrior. Um, that was uh, a big surprise for me. It happened when I was in Warcraft and I cannot even remember. I think it was one of those things where like every PVP group needed an MS warrior, a mortal strike warrior for a while. And nobody was playing a warrior. And I'm like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm just going to be the warrior and I'm going to put mortal strike on everyone. And so I ended up playing this class that I never normally would play, which is heavy armor. I almost never play heavy armor. And, uh, I ended up being the warrior and man, it was like super fun. You're just, you just blast off into the fray and you are the guy in the middle of all of it all the time. And it it is just, it's insane. Like it's kind of the opposite of how I normally play, which is very sort of like cerebrally tactically moving around and picking targets of opportunity. The warrior is none of that. <laughs> it is just, nope. it is like, make sure your helmet has two pads in the front because you're going in there. <laughs> and <laughs> it was, it was a blast. I, I really uh, actually enjoyed it uh, quite a bit. I got some quick. Qu- Sorry, go ahead, Cash. I was just gonna. I was gonna tag onto that and say that I kind of felt that way when I saw the fighter when we had that fighter reveal. Um, and like like I was saying before, I'm not very much of a melee based class chooser. But when you have a melee class that has the 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 oomph that the fighter looks like it's gonna have, like that gets you thinking. Like yeah, I could totally play that gap closers and jumping from one side of the river to the other i was like what that class looks fun yeah it does okay let's do some quick questions here this was our last call for questions we're going to wrap it up shortly but we want to make sure we get a few more in here so i got some quick ones for you 
This is from AV Gaming. AV's been a big supporter of us lately, and, and thank you very much for that. Uh, being that we all role play, do you think that they will have an RP tag along with the guild tag in Ashes of Creation? JB. No. Cash. Yes, slash I hope they do. I think it would be great. Um, it brings me back to, I know this is a quick question, so I'll make it quick. Uh, it brings me back to the Apple in front of uh, character names or behind character names in Guild Wars 2, which basically meant that they were willing to teach, um, willing to teach new players. And they would frequently hang out in new player areas and gift you bags and some gold. And I loved that. So if there's a way for people to see that you are willing to openly role play, I think that would be a very smart slash amazing feature. I'm going to go with JB's answer on this one and also say no, because I feel like putting role play after a name just kind of invites maybe, maybe contact that people weren't necessarily wanting. But when you put that Apple thing in front of me, like Guild Wars 2 did, that's just so tempting, right? Like, they did such a good job with that. That was one of the best things that Guild Wars 2 ever did, uh, in my opinion, as far as like advancing the genre was that idea of just having like a, these people are going to help you. And that's awesome. So I'm with you. I hope they do. But I think that JP's probably right on this one. Um, from Shipples, favorite board game slash card game. Cash. Cards Against Humanity, as a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to play with the family tomorrow night. We're going to do that on a trip, by the way. I have it. Shocked, <laughs> not shocked. <laughs> want to see Sunny oh blush? God, I'm going to die. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I'm going to be the first person to mentally die while his body is still walking around with a drink. Friends, if you have never played Cards Against Humanity mixed with some whiskey and friends... Do yourself a favor <laughs> and bring one of these. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. JB, uh, card game, board game. Uh, I'm going to go board game. I'm going to go old school. Clue. Clue. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you have like particular reason why Clue is your favorite? Of I all of those? played it with my mom all the time growing up. And my dad Aww. would always refuse to play because he would just get beat and then he'd get like ticked off and walk away. But like it was like the best. Like so my mom and I we would always just go one v one all the time. Like we would just like and that was how we that was one of the things we did growing up. Kelly thought she wanted to play Clue and she like really loved it. And then we got it like a few years ago again and played it, and she's like, I hate this game. <laughs> Oh, it was I like a that. weird. It was like Star Wars Clue, though. It was like a weird variation. It wasn't very good, but like I just find it so funny. Like you think of like how much you enjoy a game from your childhood, and you play it, and you're like, "Oh, that's right." I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> um, favorite uh, board game for me is Star Wars Outer Rim. Uh, it is a new board game uh, over the last couple of years, and it is just so, so good. Uh, and I and my buddy for my birthday built me like a whole giant holder for it and instead of the character things we got all the old uh like star wars figures from the 80s and made them the real characters oh. so you move those guys around that's cool i'll put pictures i think i put pictures on the instagram it's like it's freaking spectacular i saw it i love that picture super cool i think i even commented like those are uh, actual star wars figures yeah, from the 70s all. and 80s and so then like uh over the last week or so i've been on ebay buying the uh, expansion ones that i didn't have and so like just just today, I got a uh, black croissant and showed up like a, a Wookiee showed up at the That's mail. So cool. Harrison Dula showed up the day before. Uh, it's, it's awesome. So good. I love so it. So good. Can you do okay. a Wookiee impression, JB? That's okay. It sounds like he's yeah, gurgling like a, water. C minus. Cash. Like an adolescent. He had to open the mouth like a mouth a little more. It's not bad. Not bad. I got. I got a good one. Oh, that's good. Oh. Wow! Oh, that's a, even snort. Hands, you hear the snort? Hands. That's oh. aggressive. Oh, I feel like I, I need to go take a shower. <laughs> yeah, you slapped uh, on me. You really I got, angry. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're all, we're, uh, we're all done with the. Uh, we're all done with the um, we'll never, wild we'll animal never calls here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Zen Marksman had a good question, and Zen says, "Odd question: 
What is the one essential you need to game comfortably? Like a chair, mouse, some type of peripheral. Ooh. Sun. Uh, it's a Naga mouse. It's a Naga mouse with all the buttons on my thumb. Like I just can't do without it. And they, like I got like a knockoff one for my laptop and the, the buttons click like a little too easily and it just kind of drives me absolutely crazy. You, you are such a cheap ass dude. I know, I really <laughs> am. I really am. You gotta stop it's that true. stuff, a, bro. A dollar saved is a dollar earned. Yeah, uh, it's a dollar like, aggravation. The 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 Naga mouse with all the oh, you can't I got it. Can't tied even down, see it, like, Sonny. Oh, yeah. I know. I'm about to pick <laughs> mine up. Now, it's tired on a thing. Thank you. There, that That's one. The one. It's you got to have all the buttons on your thumb. I can't exist now. And people, have you have you ran into a person that's seen you use a mouse like that? I'm like, what are all those? And you're like, these are my thumb buttons. And they're yeah. like, you do not know where those buttons are. I'm like, look at me go. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Jim's, what about you, bud? I'm gonna go with so instead of going in the uh, probably one of the obvious, which is probably a mouse. I'm gonna go for me. So it's a footrest that I have that I had never had, and then I bought one. It's just like it sits on the ground. It just kind of has like this elevation, to where my feet can sit on comfortably. And so it's like a uh, it's like a little chair for your feet while you game, and it's super freaking comfortable. I actually have um I actually have one of those too. Uh, I'm my long legs i mean i'm six three so i have to have something underneath the desk otherwise i would sonny you're gonna love this i would sit erect <laughs> the entire time <laughs> i love that word it's fun um uh i won't go with the low-hanging fruit which is also my naga um i'll go with something else but i do have a story about the naga and my reliance on it um i will go with uh an elevated desk and that is currently what I'm at right now. I went and I actually built these desks and I set them because I'm taller. I set them to the perfect height for me. So I'm comfortable when I game and then I unplugged them. <laughs> I'm like, this is it because I have all my cabling and never, stuff. never again. <laughs> I, I am a cable management uh, fiend. I, I, if I see a cable underneath my desk, it drives me crazy. So I have everything mounted like nice and cleanly underneath my desk. So even if I wanted to change the elevation on this thing, I couldn't. So I just unplugged it when it was at the perfect time. Anyway, my story about this mouse, the Naga. I remember we were doing content creation for Wildstar and I went to E3 and I was hanging out with uh, Stefan Frost. I don't know if anybody knows who Stefan Frost is, but he's a amazing game developer and just one hell of a really good dude. Um, and he was part of the, uh, of wild stars team at carbine. And I remember I was hanging out with him at E3 and he was like, Hey dude, we're doing a PVP tournament for wild star a little bit later. And we need some people like, do you, do you want to play? And I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. And we got there on the show floor where they were doing uh, the where they were going to do the PvP tournament. They had all these monitors and stuff set up and all these awesome gaming rigs. And I took one look at the mouse and it was a standard mouse. And this is when I truly realized my reliance on a Naga and my thumb buttons. Friends, I don't know how to play a game <laughs> with the keyboard like these are. These are WASD fingers. That's it. They don't do anything else but WASD. <laughs> so I was like, dude, this is going to sound so stupid. But I can't. Like, I'll get steamrolled so fast because I have no idea how to play on a keyboard and use the numbers. So that's funny. Yeah, that's that's why when this mouse has even an ounce of problems, I immediately buy a backup immediately <laughs> like, hit the oh. buy it now button two day shipping get it here as fast as possible <laughs> so, wow true story there's a possibility that i might be without a mouse <laughs> <laughs> the possibility i won't be gaming until this mouse shows up at my doorstep oh you're so right though about the th about the like the getting a standard mouse and being like <laughs> what, do you do with this? <laughs> what do i what, I'm supposed to deal like where are my, is the, where's the three button? <laughs> it's just so miserable. It's awful. And it is like hilariously something that only MMO gamers really go through. All right. Last question of the night. You ready for this? <clears throat> 
Here we go. This one comes from Wizzy. I like this one a lot. When you envision your character in your mind palace, what does their outfit look like? JB? If I'm going, truthfully, if I'm going to near dwarf, they are flaming red mohawk. Think Dane from the Iron Hills from Lord of the Rings. So flaming red mohawk, tattoos, scalp on the sides, all kinds of battle rugged leathers with iron accents and a giant freaking axe and shield. That's that's about where I end up. That that tracks. Cash. Um okay. Picture this. Oh crap. Aelin and bald. That's it. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going more there. Um, no, no, I'll keep going. I'll keep. I was going, going on a journey. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm. Instead I'm I went one to an of, Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm one of those people that gets super pissed in games if bald is not an option, right? For <sighs> obvious reasons. Um, but I would be uh, a bald alien with a salt and pepper beard. And a darker face, like a tanned face, maybe a scar, right? He's he's seen a lot of shit. Um, and black leathers with, um, I would say, some silver, maybe some silvery accents, like some rings and stuff on there. Um, two one-handed swords at his side. Obviously, the bow on his back. A long, tattered cloak pulled very far down on his head to shade his face. So basically, scout slash stealthy, roguey looking ranger. Not bad. Yes. Two, two swords for a ranger? Two swords. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Um, in my mind right now, red hair... Aelin wearing a Tutu. well used bartender's apron, female. Uh, behind the counter at the Sleepy Owl Tavern, slinging beers, but she is also a rogue and knows exactly what's going on under the rock. So mm. to speak. Ah. That sounds good. What's she wearing underneath that apron, bud? Thanks for listening to the show, everybody. <laughs> Have a great night. <laughs> One year. Come on, man. One year. Don't ruin my <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> Need to pushing it, pushing it to see if we make it to two. <laughs> it was at that moment they got canceled. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. oh. Is that a red card? Where's the red I card? <laughs> yeah, it is ended. Here I got one. It ended it. You get kicked off the field. There you go. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it, JB. Yeah, Why don't you wrap buddy. up our, uh, our AMA show? Thank you. Thank you all so much for uh, for joining us. This has really, really been an awesome show. We've had a lot of fun. And uh, and for a year, you know, we I know we say this a lot, but it is just so true that we wouldn't be doing this for as long as we have if we weren't having so much fun with you guys. Um, that that has been a big thing. The guild launch uh, over the, the last few months, just everything has been just really special for us. So thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, I'll hop in there real quick and just say uh, thanks for thanks everybody for coming. This was a very special occasion for us, and to echo what Sonny said, um, you guys are the reasons that we're doing this. Um, it has been a, a very big honor for us to be able to slowly grow and build our community into one of friendship and respect, and it seems like uh, I. I really don't know what the formula is i think it's it's some kind of a mystery sauce but for some reason we are bringing in the best people into our twi our twitch chat into our community and everybody's having a really good fun time together talking ashes and ramping up for this game so thank you all for being part of the journey with us
Agree, 100%. I couldn't say it any better. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Folks, this was the podcast for Ashes of Creation, Lore Forged. If you enjoyed your time here, let us know how we're doing. And I'm going to challenge every single one of you here at Lore Forged Live. Over the last year, if you have listened to the show, well, clearly you have, you're here. At some point, go to your podcast app of choice, not YouTube, podcast app of choice, and leave a review. Whether it, whatever it is, it doesn't have to really want to write anything, leave stars, whatever it is, however you feel, let us know how we're doing. It really helps us out and helps the algorithm guides, and we really appreciate it. You can always call us 87... Nope, that's not right. 516-875. There it is. 1776. And finally, Sonny, they can email us at loreforgedhq at gmail.com. You can go to loreforged.com to find our link tree that has the links to all of our links. If you'd like links on your links, go to link tree. Uh... <laughs> YouTube is where the good stuff is at. Um, and that is at youtube.com slash at Loreforged. If you look for Loreforged, you will find us because now we have 1,000 subscribers. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Milestone. <laughs> Milestones. Uh, Twitch. Twitch is where we have an awful lot of fun. And that is right here. Twitch.tv slash HQ Tomorrow... I will be streaming the dev a mm, AMA. It is an AMA, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Where everyone's doing an AMA. You like AMAs on your AMAs? <laughs> let's let's do it. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow uh, afternoon, and uh, about a half hour before the the whole thing starts, I will go live. I think somebody help me out with the time on that in the chat when that thing actually starts. But uh, I will be doing that. Patreon. That is where you can find all of our content early. Every time when you do a YouTube video, it will come out first on Patreon. Plus you get access to the Happy Hour channel in our Discord and the er, the Sleepy Owl Tavern, the State of the Owl. And that is our uh, once a month sort of behind the scenes show. Although I feel like this whole show was behind the scenes show. But uh, that's a lot of fun, too. So that is exclusive to our patrons. And look for fun stuff to be coming in year two from Patreon. The show looks like it starts 11 a.m. Pacific. So that would be 1 o'clock Central, which means that I'll probably start at like 1230. How's that sound? Does that sound good? Just click the little button with the little alarm clock on Twitch and you will uh, be able to get a notification when I go live. Sound good? See you tomorrow. Cash. 11 o'clock, I will probably be curled in the fetal position in severe pain getting my tricep tattooed. But mm. this is what we do for the things that we love. 11 Z's, though. 11 Z's. <laughs> Adventures, if you can get through all of the Olympic break dancing that's going on on X right now, you can follow us at Loreforged HQ for all the announcements of the things that we are doing. You can follow us on Instagram at LoreForgeHQ. This week in our Discord community, we have 12 brand new family members. We would like to mention, we would like to welcome Tenguru, Mara Jade, Zana Fee, Mara Jade. Jaden. <laughs> Mara Jade. <laughs> Got excited there. Yeah, that's Luke Skywalker's daughter before Disney ruined everything. Uh, nope. Sigvark, <laughs> Quarantine. Cell sales. Oh, that was his wife, huh? Yeah, you're right. His wife. You're right. Okay. Sorry, Star Wars nerd. Kind of Star Wars fan. Um, really not a good one. Song Filch. That one is super <laughs> suspect. But we're we're gonna let it pass. Um, Brand the Mage Taker, Broed Out, Hanold Buddy, and Stellos. Welcome to the Lore Forged family. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We love you all. Thank you everyone who joined us here for the live show. We'll see you back next week right here on Lower Forge. Take care, everybody. Peace, love, and honeybees. Safe travels, adventures. <laughs>